phantom is crap and a lot of people those who just booted up the game after around a year or so and have no idea about the updates stupid casuals and those who have been hanging on to every bit of update news religiously can both agree after the first few times that they've dealt with the phantom they think something around the lines of i hate these things they're so annoying I think it's worse for people who have been following Minecon because a fair share, well, majority, of those people actually voted to have this thing added into the game. Okay, unless you've been living under, a ne under the nether for about two years or so, Mojang gave players a choice between four hostile mobs to vote to have added in the aquatic update. We could have had a terrifying mutant patrolling in the depths. We could have had a new type of blaze with shields and a shockwave attack, and that's taken from Jeb's mouth. We could have had... Hunger would have been worse than the Phantom, if I'm being honest, seeing as nowadays we have the Grindstone, and it does its job perfectly, but still. We got this stupid thing. And why did we get it? Did we get it. Why did we, why did we choose this thing? Like, let's, let's just go over some of the misconceptions we had about it before we voted for it. We thought we could fight it with the Elytra or something to that degree. That by haven't slept in many days, Mojang meant haven't slept in many days. You call not you call not sleeping for three days an insomniac? No. No sleep for a week is an insomniac. No sleep for a long weekend is a really good partier. I'm going to be real, though. I thought that I would have more for this, but that's it. Which begs the question, why did we vote for this thing? What is wrong? I'm looking at the results, too. First, it looks like we got rid of the Kraken, then the Inferno. Why did the finale come down to the Enchant Eater and the stupid Space Bat? What is wrong with you people? Like, were you actually afraid of some actual fair challenge for once? Like, really? It's extremely unfun to fight. When it comes down to it, I'd rather tussle with the Inferno and it sort of blazes, grapple with the Kraken and its tongue attack, or step on an Enchant Eater. No, okay, not the, not the Enchant Eater, that things actually work. And this is before. Of the Phantom, maybe it's had different from others, seeing as I play on a server for the majority or entirety of my time, if I'm being real, because I have a massive ego and I like to show off my builds. And as such, when there are about 15 people or so online, sleeping isn't really a priority. So, inevitably, when I'm hanging out near my base and I just got back from Crusading End Cities, which took about two months in Minecraft time, I don't have sleep on my mind whatsoever. So then I hear the souping sounds and think, oh boy, here goes another five minutes of my life washed away. See, here's the thing about fighting phantoms. Most of the time fighting phantoms isn't actually spent fighting phantoms. It's spent staring at the sky, watching the AI struggle to pin you down and look for a dive, then smack into a tree or the roof of your house or whatever. And if you have other mobs around you, forget it. You gotta take care of this and then the other threat. When we talk about its stats, I think the damage it does is fine, but it's health? 20 health on th this thing? That doesn't that doesn't only make no sense from a real's perspective, but how does something that small have the same health pool as a human sense from a mechanical perspective? Now that this thing has more health, unless you're using a smite 5 diamond pickaxe, keep fuck dive bombing you, then get out of your reach, and then dive bomb you again, wash, rinse, repeat. If you don't hit it, it's going to take enough health off you to make you a certifiable organ donor. Leave anyway and let the rest of its band take a shot because these things attack in packs! Stupid thing flying up there like that. Now it's just going to come down, it's going to turn around for some reason, hit that tree, and then come at me, and then it's going to go up. Yep, stellar AI design, Mojang. Absolutely stellar on your part. Yep. Combat against these foul things is either unfathomably difficult for a new player who doesn't know any better, and just plain annoying for the seasoned player who just wants to finish the stupid wall they're working on, but can't with the space bats knocking them off to get killed by fall damage. How many times does that happen to everyone watching this? Kree, how about you? A lot. And can I talk about the rewards for a second? The phantom membrane is okay, but not fine. Mojang, why is there no potion of levitation? Potion never occurred to you? Doubtful. Did you think it would be overpowered as a splash pot? Then nerf the duration. Or just understand that in serious combat, nobody spends time on potions. Wait, was it for the how did we get here advancement? 
I hope not, because if you're prioritizing a stupid advancement that no one but Rooster Teeth is going to be serious about over consistency in your game design, you can only get the advancement by getting the mob effects. You're Minecraft. You're above the speedrunner jacked achievement poaching crowd. Act like it. Just add a little low time levitation potion. You only get praise. I think that's all the problems. At least that's all the problems I have with it. Who knows what else other people have to say about it. But I wouldn't be worth my massive salt if I didn't offer a solution. Other people have made suggestions as well. My original solution of make it so only people who fly Elytra have them spawn may have been a bit extreme and impractical. I mean, I doubt anybody watching this has ever heard me say that, but it's something I've said in the past and now no longer say because that's stupid. Three tweaks to its stats, and this mob will be... I don't think it's supposed to be enjoyable. It's kind of just a punish mechanic, you know, but whatever. Tweak one, raise the bar for insomnia and make it based on difficulty. This has been something a lot of people have been saying, so I can't really take credit for it. On easy, nine nights on normal, and seven nights on hard. Tweak two, lower the health drastically, at least by 40%, and raise the speed of its flight. Combat with the phantom should simulate disorientation, not tedium. It may be annoying as well, but for a much better and engaging reason. Tweak 3. Fix the pathfinding and dive. If I have to fight one more phantom that slams its face into the top of a tree trying to get to me, or tries to dive at me with its stomach facing me, then I have to reorient itself mid-dive, I'm going to saw my own arm off. Tweak 1 also works better for the drops as well. If the phantom membrane becomes more difficult to obtain, it should have more in-game value like being able to make a levitation potion. Just do it, Mojang. You aren't going to break the combat meta or make it any worse than it already is. I actually really like the trident, but I don't think other people share my sentiment. Like, do you agree? Do you really like this thing? It's okay. It's not the best. That's what everyone says. Which makes sense. It's a massive pain to get and not very viable to fight against other players of time for an interesting yet situational weapon. Back before I had any sense in game design, I complained, why did you add this before you added the spear? What? Nowadays, I see that it's a result of the update. The ocean needed a real rework to it, and I mean, what was once a gravel pit that got flooded became a teeming and living biome, like one of the best biomes, actually. But it isn't perfect yet. It's not going to just be a rant about the trident with the ocean. Well, the ocean itself is just fine, it's just the mechanics introduced surrounding it that have problems. But first of all, let's handle the trident. This thing is stupid hard to obtain. It's challenging enough finding an ocean rune with a trident wielding drowned. Kill it, and even then, it's random chance whether or not you even get it. Even with looting. This to split the trident up into three pieces and hide it around inside the ocean monument. First of all, no. That's dumb. The monument should stay its own thing. Leave it alone. Minecraft doesn't do weapons parts in crafting. You don't make a sword by putting together a hilt and, and blade, and you shouldn't. That raw simplicity in crafting is fundamental. I want to just quickly praise them for the crossbow recipe. Good stuff. I'm impressed. On to my solution. Just make a moderately rare, maybe not too rare, variant of an ocean ruin. One with more houses, or a special house or something. Make every drowned there spawn with tridents. Then in one of those houses, probably the special one, like a tower or something, put the trident in a chest. It's a challenge, but it's a challenge that consistently pays off. Like, the actual fighting the drowns and stuff isn't extremely difficult, because, let's face it, fighting in this game isn't extremely difficult. But finding them... It's just tedium, and even for this game, that tedium is way too much. For issues that could have an amazing fix, hold on to your seats because this one's good. For those of you confused about why this video is called The Phantom Rant and why I'm currently talking about Nautilus shells, this is slowly devolving into a thing where I talk about most of Mojang's recent mistakes and such, so just deal with it, okay? It's not my problem, it's your problem. So, oh, Nautilus shells. It's the same problem as the tridents. Getting these things just sucks. It's not difficult, it's just stupid. It's just boring. Fishing and sometimes killing drowned, that's how you get these things. Just 
obvious that Mojang is aware of this problem at the least, so they made it so that the Wandering Trader also has it in its stock, but I think that was actually just to make it a renewable resource, so, you know what, whatever. Give him points for that. I guess Mojang was only concerned with adding more content, but they didn't think about the content in gameplay terms. Like, the Wandering Trader, that's nice and all, but it's a villager. And one that doesn't stick around that much. I mean, come on. We're not how we're supposed to rely on that. So here's my thought process. The Nautilus shell is the shell of an ancient water-dwelling cephalopod, the ancestor of squids and cuttlefish. This is real-life stuff, too, not some canon I'm reading off the bookshelves of the enchanting room or something. Seeing as it lived so long, why not implement it as a fossil ore? Such an ore could be found under oceans and much less commonly in deserts. They wouldn't be in veins like iron or coal, just single blocks like ever. Fossil ores or fossil deposit or whatever you want to call it. I was thinking the Nautilus shells might be a bit too stocked up on being a result of it being mined out, literally just being found all the time. The ore should obviously be rare, but seeing as Nautilus shells are technically bone, how about making one shell worth one bone meal? It obviously isn't as good as bones are, if that's your purpose, but at least it's an option. The thing about most variables in Minecraft they aren't necessary, but I'd rather have it than not have it, especially if it makes sense. With all its gameplay around the concept of player usefulness, we wouldn't have pandas, foxes, flowerpots, or the trident. If only there was a concept for an underwater hostile mob just lying around somewhere, you know what I mean? Right. Now, I could just say add the kraken to the ocean and leave it at that, but I'm not completely stupid. So I want to go over this mob so that the same mistakes aren't made like they made with the phantom. Like I said, the Phantom is not a bad mob. Did I say that? I don't remember if I said that or not. The bad way to handle this mob would be to just let it spawn just anywhere in the ocean and make it as fast as the squid and have it do low damage. Make it a hindrance mob. Almost as bad as a punishment mob. Just boring. Gets in the way. You know, that kind of stuff. Chasing down boats that are minding their own business. Punishing players for traveling over the ocean in general to add this mob, we have to be specific what role it would play. In deep areas, like caverns or caves, low enough so that the shallows and the ocean surface are somewhat safe. And for those of you who are going to be smart faces and mention the drowned, when's the last time you had any real trouble from a drowned that didn't have a trident? Like, honestly. Imagine how terrifying this thing would be approaching a player, its massive quad jaws spread, not making any sound until it's about to strike, Ready to messily devour whoever wasn't paying attention. More about you know, make underwater exploration be more about keeping on your toes and such, not just monotonously mining for whatnot. You know, like it's supposed to. Think of like a creeper. Silence until it counts. Maybe a small growl as it gets halfway to tongue lashing range. Let's make its health pool high, but its spawn rate low. Makes it that this mob must be a more special fight, kind of like. A mini boss or something, not quite as much as a mini boss as the guardians, elder guardians, more, you know, more just an encounter with something vaguely terrifying. Eye damage in two sets, like, um, let me explain that. Player, and on its own, deal about three to four to five damage depending on the difficulty. When it drags you in, in stun lock, which would suck, but you know what, that's what you get for not paying attention. 14 to 16 to 18 damage, depending on difficulty. This means that keeping your distance will become imperative. This also makes being prepared for fossil mining expedition more important. And above can kill you in one bite. If only there was a ranged weapon that functioned underwater, something that people called useless before, something also found in the ocean. There isn't any reason not to add this mob for these purposes, it just gives the ocean the full set. I don't understand how anyone managed to get the choice down to this and the phantom in the final vote humankind had spontaneously tripped and driven a railroad spike into the frontal lobe. At the moment, the Phantom is a terrible mob. The Enchant Eater, on the other hand, would have been useless. It reeks of punish mechanics, with the whole bear trap mouth thing going on. Wait, was that real? I, I can't remember the thing where it falls into the ground from its mouth, which was that actually a real thing. 
me or somebody else making stuff up, now that I think about it. If it had been implemented in 1.13, it would have ended up as the less consistent and less reliable version of the grindstone. Nowadays, if it were to be added, it would just be that. We're trying to use it because we have the grindstone. Would you rather go on a 5-10 to 10 minute errand to assemble a workstation to accomplish? Accomplish the thing you want to do indefinitely, or find one screwed up crocodile crab and coax it to eating your magic sword and get the EXP. That's how that works. I don't know if that's how they designed it. Design is somewhat boring compared to the other three. Like, where would you even put this stunted thing? At a camouflage at the end stone, or at a magic dimension and have it be a magic eating creature. Other than that, it's pointless. I've already covered all the important stuff. From this point on, it's not unimportant. Still get to listen in though. And there's then all my other issues above, because it's not really issues at this point, it's just stuff I'd like added in. The next update's probably gonna be the nether update. Okay, maybe that okay. Maybe that joint with the cave update, because people are stupid. The current trend in 1.13 and 1.14 looks like they're trying to go back on old content and areas and renew it with new content before the update. Now it's hands down one of the best biomes in the games, right? Coral reefs and the kelp and stuff, it's great. Literally all the same. Now visiting them is actually kind of fun. I don't think, oh boy, I can raid a blacksmith. I think, oh boy, I can raid most of these houses heard people asking about the cave update. Idiots. Yeah, it would be nice if some caves got some new stuff, but that isn't really high on my list of things that ought to be fixed. It doesn't need new content. It doesn't need fixing. Lots of issues and content needs to be filled there. First order of business, the nether roof. The nether came out in 1.2 during the Halloween update. Build height was raised to 256 blocks. So when the building height was put up, the nether was just left in its stunted form. Slightly more than half of the available space. So first order of business would be to make the nether 256 blocks tall. Imagine the new caverns. The massive caves you could explore with the hellish environment. It'd be great. Business. New biomes in the nether is in a bit more desperate need. I don't quite know what... I doubt I'll ever get much of a say. So here are some ideas. Soul sand dunes. Mushroom jungles. Okay, gas hives are a bit more of a dungeon than a biome, and one I don't get credit for. Third order of business. This is a smaller one. Nether fortresses could use just a moderate remodeling. Or have more rooms, more fort elements. Stay plain and monolithic looking, though. It adds to the eeriness of it. The inhabitants are perfect. Blazes and wither skeletons are perfect. Don't change a thing. I think that the nether could actually use a few more blocks in general are not the current nether rack because right now the nether rack looks like the inside of somebody's esophagus got stung by bees. Just disgusting. You, you gotta make it less lumpy, guys. It's, it's bad. Bitball some new content ideas that would benefit another update. The Inferno mob, for one thing. You know, that thing in there. Their mobs are really hard to mess up. I don't think that Mojang needs my help on this. Increased damage defense, shockwave attack, always travels with a band of blazes around it. It, all, it says it all in the description. I have much better feeling about this, letting Mojang go wild with this than I do with the Phantom and the Kraken. A new weapon would be nice. Nether themed items are a tricky thing to think about, but what I like the idea of is a battle axe. It doesn't even have to be a nether battle axe. It can just be like normal tools and swords. Wood, stone, iron butter, and diamond. The idea behind the battle axe would be that it's to the sword what the crossbow is to the bow. Higher damage, lower swing speed, with a crushing move similar to that of the normal axe. Hit that goes through defenses. The problem with normal axes is that they aren't meant for combat, so the durability drops faster than players. Damage per second isn't all that great. The DPS for a battle axe would be the same as the sword at fighting groups with its sweeping attack and faster hit speed, but the axe will be better at one-on-one -on -one fight for crushing opponents timed hits. Also, as a side gimmick, it would mine wood just fine. Take more durability for doing so, like the opposite of a normal axe. It's just a two-sided axe, five of the material and two sticks. Be a nice combo with the shield too, like a projectile counter that forces the opponent to engage in one-on-one -on -one melee. 
that crush the blow a little, make it more difficult active against armor, etc. Have an increase in swing speed and champ, but that seems a bit cheap and overpowered, because that's just going to make the rocket like crazy. Wow, that went on for a while. I mean, it's a good idea, right? Maybe, maybe make the update the battle for the nether update. I'd go over some more weapons ideas I have, but maybe in another video or something else where I just vent ideas. Not in a while. I don't know. I get, yeah? I get mm -hmm. a nod from her? All right. Yeah. Thing felt like my everything Mojang has implemented incorrectly, the or should have been than anything. Speaking of, I want to make something clear. I don't hate Mojang. I've heard some crap about Mojang, about how they don't care about the players, or about how the quality of the game is crashing a bit. Let me tell you, that's a real load of Phantom Membrane. These issues that I just went on Lunatic's tirade about are just mistakes. If you take a look at Minecraft and its entire history, really bad back in the day. It was literally a Lego set because when it came down to it, the only thing that kept it alive was the player creativity. Getting real content. Remember how the village's ocean and end used to be? Think about if actually think about if you were to play that stuff nowadays. Nostalgic blinded morons. Mojang is very much on top of going back on what they have and revamping it to an acceptable content level. The other sign was 1.14. The update may have felt like a slight crash and burn, but they knew exactly what was going on and they got right on to fixing it. Stuff happens, kids. They patched up what made the village and village update unplayable and made it problematic. If they were EA, they'd take your $26.95, charge village and pillage at $10 DLC until you jump into an unloaded chunk and die. And they'd even be more poorly optimized. That doesn't mean Mojang's mistakes shouldn't be fixed. That's what I'm talking about here. But that's what we, the player base, have to get through their skulls. Like, the whole only one mob will be chosen vote thing was a terrible choice. You won't say you went against what you said if you just add the Mojang. You only get positivity from that. I mean, I guess they've learned something from that too, with the newer vote, with the biomes and such, and how they're not just update those other biomes that didn't get voted instantly, but that doesn't fix what they've already done, you know? It fixes what they're going to do, but they should still add those other things in. <sighs> Keep it up, Mojang. You aren't perfect, but you are close to the best. Never forget that.